What's up guys, TechLab here. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another old graphics card. You have seen this one before on the channel. We have tested it in a couple of systems, but they have always held it back. So today, we're actually going to be testing it in something much bigger, just to see, is it actually something worth getting in 2024, or is it now time to just retire them off? So the graphics card that we're looking at today is of course the AMD Radeon HD 7870. This was actually created by AMD all the way back in 2012 at the peak of gaming and it was also at the time that they competed extremely well with Nvidia. This card is pretty unique to me because I haven't actually played with that many HD cards before. I think I did actually try a HD 5770 at some point but I actually just bought that one because I thought the box was really nice and it didn't perform very well, particularly in modern games. This one though was a little bit more high end than that thing. This was probably one of AMD's highest end graphics cards at the time and it was actually pretty decent when you took a look at the specs. Underneath the covers of this one, it was running a GCN 1.0 GPU. It had a base clock speed of 1000 megahertz. It had 1280 shaders, two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, all sitting on a 256-bit bus, and it ran from a PCI Gen 3x16 interface. This GPU only used around 170 watts, and it actually had a retail price of around 349, which was considerably more expensive than its predecessor and its successor too, which was the R9270X. I managed to pick this card up for free because it came in a system that I purchased and it wasn't actually listed, so it was a bit of a good score there. And inside that system, it was a little bit disappointing, and that was mostly because of the rest of the specs. It did though need a little bit of a clean because if you looked at the back, the uh, little stickers for the warranty stickers weren't actually broken, which means in all of that time, which is now what, about 12 years, this thing had never had a repaste, so that was quickly resolved. We just basically tore the card apart, very simple, replaced the thermal paste on it, put it all back together again, and then the card actually looked pretty good, and it ran perfectly fine as well. There was no issues in running this card in any of our tests that we did in either of those old systems or in our benching rig, which is this system here. So. It actually worked out pretty well. The exact model that we've got here today is the XFX R7800 series Ghost Thermal Edition. It's actually a pretty nice looking model inside and outside of a system. It has a full aluminium shroud all the way across and it has this really cool little side panel on it with the logoing and naming. It also only requires two six pin PCIe connections which most people will actually have although you don't actually get a backplate and the specific one that I've got does only have the single fan thermal solution. That doesn't really seem to make a difference on this card, but I have seen them out there with twin fan configurations. They would probably be the ones that you want if you were to actually pick something up like this. But overall, I think the card looks fantastic. It's been a while since we've actually seen them designed like this with specifics on the side and in this red here. I don't think they actually use that red anymore. I'm not quite sure. XFX graphics cards do look fantastic. Even the modern ones do, but even back then, you could clearly see that they put a lot of effort into the aesthetics. When it comes to the connections on this card, you do have two DVI connections, a normal HDMI and two little mini HDMIs. You also get this really cool little XFX logo in, in there, which is part of the uh, ventilation system on it. I've seen them do that on quite a few graphics cards and I think that does look really cool. But overall, I think this graphics card looks fantastic. It doesn't matter whether you vertically mount it, it looks very nice, or if you just install it properly like that, it still looks great because of the way that they've actually configured the side panel in here. So you've got that lovely real red or orange that actually runs across the system there. I'd suppose if you were to theme up a system in terms of AMD, put a bit of red, bit of orange in there, it would go really nice. But for any other colors, probably actually it would stand out a little bit. But overall, I think it looks great. Now, when it comes to testing this graphics card, I wasn't 100% sure what we should actually put against it. It is only a two gigabyte model that is now 12 years old. There are no supported drivers for it. And as you'll see from the benchmarks, that did cause us some issues. But to begin with, I thought, why not stick it against our normal test bench of all those new and modern games out there? see if gamers can actually still get any kind of experience out of it, and also see if it's actually still worth picking up today. Okay, so there's absolutely no point showing you those benchmarks. It will just simply be a slideshow. So instead, we'll show you an actual slideshow that is much quicker to get through. When testing this graphics card against our normal test suite in 1080p with a low setting, most of the games won't even start. Games like 
Horizon Forbidden West, Robocop Rogue City, The Last of Us just simply show up errors when you try to start the game. It's either a shader compatibility issue, a direct X issue, or just simply that the drivers are not supported. So you're going to have no luck actually playing those games there. You won't even get a startup screen on Alan Wake 2. It just simply will not accept this card. But for the others that actually ran, you're pretty much going to get a near 30 FPS experience across a lot of those titles. Of course, things like Space Marine 2, we're only getting 10 frames per second with an average of 8 frames per second on those 1% lows. And Ratchet and Clank getting 9 frames per second on average with 6 frames per second on the 1% lows are completely unplayable. You just will not want to play that game. And to be honest, even with the low results of the others, you know, performing around 30 FPS, you still wouldn't want to play them because the 1% lows are just shocking. Even dropping the resolution to 720p doesn't really see that much benefit here. There are a few exclusions here, of course. Spider-Man Remastered, you can get a reasonably playable experience here of 44 frames per second with a 1% low of 27. Doom Eternal, of course, works perfectly fine on this card, as it does in most cards anyway. Getting an average of 74 frames per second with a 1% low of 53 and just about playable Dead Island 2 managing to get an average of 45 frames per second but the 1% low of 20 really does take away from the gameplay experience so even in 720p you will not get a decent experience on those games with this graphics card it is just simply too old now it doesn't have the VRAM and especially the drivers to even support most of those games anyway even if you do decide to run them at a decent 30 fps experience in 720p the graphical fidelity is so bad that you might as well just go buy an old games console and just play them on that because you're pretty much going to get the same experience. So that of course answers the question, does this card keep up with modern gaming? Clearly not, you just simply can't actually get any kind of decent experience out of it. So instead I thought what we would do is test it against some old games, see what you could actually play on a Radeon HD 7870 here in 2024. Of course, older games it will actually start and play, they're going to have driver support because it existed before. But either way, let's take a look at them anyway. So as you can see from those benchmarks, this card is actually terrible for anything modern, but for the older games, it is still perfectly fine. If you are building something like a retro gaming PC, you can get away with actually using one of these. It doesn't get too hot, it doesn't get too noisy, and you're going to get a pretty decent 1080p 60 FPS experience. Now, of course, if you want to play something like Black Mesa, which is reasonably modern, but very low in demand, you can actually get away with it. We managed to get 60 FPS in 1080p. So if you wanted to play that, which is the remake or remaster of Half-Life 1, of course, this card will do it. But for anything else, you're pretty much out of luck. Now that brings us to the end of our look at the AMD Radeon HD 7870 in 2024. Not very good for modern games. Still plays old games perfectly fine if you can get a good, decent model, but 
For us, I think this is now actually going to become wall art or at least something to put on the shelves in here because it's not really going to keep up with times in the studio. Maybe we'll pull it out again at some point when we want to do like a retro build. So make sure you subscribe and at some point you may catch that kind of video. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.